We know about the tradition of WrestleMania happening every year. It's well established. Unfortunately, it's also well established that every year soon after WrestleMania, WWE is going to do another round of cuts. They're going to do their spring house cleaning and all this other bullshit. Leveraging their employees who aren't actually employees to help balance the books to put a little more black ink in their balance sheet. We all know this is coming. And we were waiting for it. Was it going to happen this week? Was it going to happen next week? Was it going to happen a couple weeks from now? But you inevitably know it's coming. Which is also an indication of it's totally not fucking necessary. If it's a tradition, they do it every year at this time. That is absolutely an indication it's not necessary, but more on that in a moment. But I guess we found out today, and boy, it was a pretty big round of layoffs, that's for sure. I say layoffs, future endeavored, like they are actually employees of the company. <laughs> I know, right? How stupid of me, independent contractors. <laughs> Y'all don't work for the company, but you can't compete against them 90 days after they fire your ass. <laughs> More typical WWE bullshit that they've been allowed to get away with for decades and people support. And don't call them to task for it. You'll see names like Samoa Joe, which is the big name, obviously, the big shocker of the day. This guy is literally sitting out there a couple of days ago at WrestleMania in a fucking poncho and doing commentary, and now he's gone. Like, maybe you're paying him a lot of money, and you didn't expect to pay him a lot of money to be a commentator, but that's the place that you're at. But releasing him? It seems especially questionable knowing you've got a rival wrestling promotion that has two hours of prime time television every Wednesday night that just did 1.2 million viewers. You're basically taking somebody that has a large following for a long period of time and saying, here, you know what, rival? Go ahead. Get a little bit of boost out of them. We don't fucking care. Even pretty stupid to me. The things like the cutting of Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, so you break them up for no fucking reason. Billy Kay goes and makes chicken salad out of chicken shit. You invest TV time in her for months. She makes the most out of it. Just had a match at WrestleMania. And you're letting her go. Again, makes absolutely no sense. And here's going to come some of the counterculture people like, it's also a tradition that no matter how well of a case I state, sometimes I do really well and sometimes I not so much. And no matter how irrefutable my points are, and again, sometimes it's very obvious and other times not so much, <laughs> um, that you'll have the idiots that will sit there and try to say, well, this is business and this is a business decision and these are tough times so they got to sit there and watch their finances and they've got to balance the books. And that's just bullshit on so many different levels. Seriously, if you see anybody tweet this hot garbage, you, you should tell them I said they're a fucking idiot. If you see anybody here on YouTube or on any podcast talking about how this is a necessary evil, necessary business decision, you can quote me by saying, and I quote, you're a fucking idiot, unquote. Because this wasn't necessary, not justifiable in any way, real shape or form. It just isn't. You can't talk about budget cuts and the need to balance your books when you just reported record profits in Q4 of 2020. You can't do that. And that's before you even started to realize the additional financial windfall that comes from the billion dollar five year Peacock deal. Sure, you're not truly getting an extra 200 million a year, but you're getting, you know, around 100 extra million a year. Like, that's not exactly a small fucking thing here. So you already had record profits. You're still cutting a shit ton of cost because you're not traveling. You're not doing all of those things. You've gotten even more of a financial windfall than you've ever had before. But now we're playing small potatoes, cutting some wrestlers so you could save a few million dollars. What, you say two million, three million, five million, ten million dollars over the life of the remainder of those people's contracts? Was that worth it? 
No, it's a blip on the fucking radar. Again, there is no real good business justification for doing this. There just isn't. You cannot talk about record profits on the one end unless they are bullshit profits, which is a different conversation, but we assume because of a publicly traded company, even though that shouldn't automatically mean shit, that their financials are somewhat on the up and up. How do you report record profits that exceed $150, $200 million and try to say, hey, we got to save five or 10 million? And if you're going to say, well, that's part of a long-term vision and strategy for WWE, for what? The fuck is their long-term vision and strategy? They don't have fucking have one. They're in a constant state of March Madness. It's survive in advance, survive in advance. Anything they had in terms of future vision, like with the WWE Network and now Peacock, like they don't have a long-term vision. They don't. And you clearly see that in how they execute with their on-screen product. There is no long-term vision. And even with that, it comes into a much bigger problem and overall philosophical challenge and disease that we have in this country around the world, but specifically in this country when it comes to big businesses and corporations in general. This mindset of maximizing profits for shareholder supremacy. You know, that Milton Friedman diary of philosophy that businesses started incorporating in the 70s and 80s because there are a bunch of greedy cocksuckers that said, hey, you've got this respected economist, <laughs> piece of shit, talking about <laughs> that the only obligation that a company has is to maximize shareholder value. What the fuck type of business philosophy is that? What the hell type of business strategy is that? Like imagine being worried about driving and only driving the maximum shareholder value that you can. I'm not here to say that that doesn't matter. I'm not here to say that's the not important at all because it is, it does matter, especially when you're a publicly traded entity. But to make that the primary sole basis for how you do your business and using people to balance your books, it creates significant problems. If any of you have ever watched WWE television and you look and you say, man, these wrestlers don't seem to really give a shit. They don't. You look at them and say, man, they feel like they're phoning it in and giving a half-assed performance. You know what? You're right. They fucking are. And why is that? Because they know they're not valued. They know that at any moment the WWE can drop them like a bad fucking habit. So why would you invest every piece of your fiber and being into that company and their vision and their future when you know that you don't matter? The number one way always to kill morale in a company? Layoffs even just the same that these are independent contractors and not employees, but you get the fucking point nonetheless. It's already bad enough when this company sat there and didn't give raises and bonuses to some of their office people because of fuck reasons, because of greed, plain and simple. Greed at the very, very top. That's all it's ever about. Don't ever kid yourself. That's what this is. Looking at all the TV time they invested in some of these people to release them, like it's just that's also really bad business. You have now cut off the chance of ever getting a return on that investment. That's stupid. Like people that make business decisions like this should not be rewarded with bonuses or promoted. They should be fucking fired. Because you've now killed morale in the company because they don't trust you. If they don't trust you and they don't believe in your why or your purpose or your vision, your mission statement, then why in the bluest of blue fucks would they give you your all? They're all. They're not going to. And that's what you get is a half-ass watered-down product. You can blame WWE and their control mechanisms and their over, you know, over management of everything. That doesn't help. But at the end of the day, the talent isn't fully invested in why in the fuck would they be? Why? Like you could sit there and tell me, well, they weren't really using them anyway, so you know why not let them go? Again, bad business decision. There's a risk analysis you've got to do and say, hey, if I let some of these people go and they go somewhere else, could they potentially be more valuable, 
by us holding on to them and forcing them to stay than letting them go somewhere else. And you think about some of the people that have tried to ask for releases lately. I'm trying to think, like, was it Chad Gable one of them? And they said no. You know, Andrade eventually got his release. But there have been others that have wanted to get out of there. And they've said no. And why the fuck didn't you just release them? So on the one hand, you're playing these petty games where you got people that don't want to be there anymore that you do keep because of that mindset of, I'm not going to let them go anywhere else and potentially bites us a little bit, which you certainly could. But then you're going to release other people when you don't have a financial business justification to fucking do so, so that potential same thing can happen. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And you can't tell me it does. We got to this really gross, sick place in our society, and specifically in this country over the past 40 to 50 years, where it became profits over people. And, and to be fair, to be clear, it's always been like that. But it became an even more hyper-speeded, bastardized version as you started talking about automation and you started talking about digitization of the work and the workforce. And you started talking about, oh, big corporations love to outsource their cock-sucking jobs. And so many of them, it is not necessary for them to do that. They just want to make more profit. They want to keep their shareholders happy, which therefore means that their stock price goes up because more people buy into it, which, oh, ding dong, dumb dicks, is where a lot of these cats have the majority of their wealth invested in any fucking ways. Like, who in the fuck would want to work for a company like this or any company that's like this? Like, these are times that you have the ability to eat cost. You should. You absolutely should. Like, why not find other purposes and other things to do with the people that you've already invested these resources and money in? And you're going to have some idiots that'll sit there and say, well, this is why WWE is who they are and why they've been successful. And this is not a business philosophy that should be praised. This is not good. This is a dated mindset that must be eradicated. Because eventually at some point in time, you're going to not get nearly what you think you can out of your people. You're never going to get to your absolute best. They're not going to align to whatever long-term vision or game plan that you have. You're going to start under-delivering to your results and, oh, wouldn't you fucking know, like WWE can find all these revenue streams all they want, but at some point in time, you have to acknowledge, at least here in the States, there are some problems and there are some big problems that the money that you have can only brush over for so long. But the problem is not having too many people. The problem is not tying up too much money in your fucking payroll. It's like I remember back in the day when in my Foot Locker store, we would produce a sales gain month over month, you know, or LY if you want to use the old LY metric, today versus LY. But the bonus was bigger, oh, and shit anyways, because Foot Locker is a shitty company. The bonus was bigger to stay under your payroll goal in terms of your number of hours a week that you had than it was to meet or exceed your sales objectives. The fuck are we doing here? Am I in the HR business or I'm in the shoe selling profit business? This is the type of shit that that reminds me of. You're trying to manage payroll for the fuck all of it, saying, oh, it's the most expensive cost. Uh, no, it fucking isn't. Especially for a company like WWE, it absolutely isn't when they're not providing health insurance for the wrestlers, excuse me, the sports entertainers, the superstars, they're not reimbursing them for travel, they're not doing a bunch of shit. They're not paying their portion of the unemployment insurance, they're not paying their portion of the social security tax for the employees, they're not they're, the wrestlers, excuse me, because they're not fucking employees, they're independent contractors, this Vince McMahon is an evil Satan, a satanic cocksucker. There's no justification for this. Fuck them. So remember that. And as much as you might hate WWE, the sad thing is, the reality is, is a lot of other companies are like this. And it's a really idiotic business strategy. And at some point in time, those chickens come home to roost. And as time goes along, you're going to see more evolution to get 
out of that mindset. And the quicker that companies and businesses do, the better off it's going to be for everybody. Because if you have employees that are bought into your vision, your dream, your goals, your mission statement, if you have employees that feel enabled and empowered and trusting in their work environment, if they buy into and believe in the message that they're being sold, they're going to give you the best possible outputs, the best possible results. Managing by fear is not leadership. Managing by fear isn't even good management. Managing by fear is exactly the type of environment you create when you use people to balance the books. It's bullshit. It's a dated philosophy. It's stupid. Vince McMahon, Johnny Ace, everybody involved with the WWE deserves one round, big round piece of fuck you from everybody on this. Because they should be better. And they're not. This isn't news to anybody. But nobody should defend this or support this or justify this because it is indefensible. It is not justifiable. There's absolutely no good business logic to do so. And frankly, there are many business indicators that tell you that this is a really bad, dumb dick thing to do.